Tell them it's all for the broken. 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 Tell them it's all for the broken. Yeah. It's all for the broken. Yeah. It's all for the broken. Yeah. It's all for the broken. Boy, look around and need hope. No question about it. Can't get around the hope. Welcome everybody, and thank you for tuning in to Healing Broken Souls. I'm Pastor John Boynowski of the Solid Rock Church of Warren, and also with us is my cohort in crime and my best friend Benny. Benny Powell, pastor of Greatest Second Greatest Second Baptist Church, whole cohort in crime. He just really said that, didn't he? <laughs> yes, I did. <laughs> All right, he did. Well, it's good to be here today. John, I thought we'd talk about something a little bit more upbeat, a little bit more positive, but in the same instance, understanding how we respond to people. Uh, one thing about healing broken souls is that sometimes we don't realize what we bring to the table. Uh, what, and what I'm talking about is the proverbial issue of having an attitude. Having an attitude. <laughs> what, you didn't know that we had attitudes? Oh, I know we got attitudes. A lot of people have attitudes. Uh, I think that sometimes people don't realize they have attitudes. I That's think for sure. They, uh, they just think it's normal. Mm -hmm. And and what they do is they, they think that it's deserving sometimes. They do. They think that it's deserving, but in, in a lot of retrospects, when we look at uh, how to help people that have a broken soul with attitudes, uh, we have to really, really go back to the beginning, you know. Uh, one thing I, I learned that is a generational uh, teaching sometimes, okay? Uh, you can see a person have the same attitude that mother has. They have the same attitude that father has. Mm -hmm. um, and you or can, their peers. Or their peers, yeah. You know, they're not as fortunate as I to have a good friend that always trying to find humor and everything like you, but... <laughs> Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm I'm still going to therapy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We're gonna we're gonna work with you on that one. Um, but tell me, what do you think? What is attitude? That's a really tough question to define because there's so many different types of attitude. Yes. But the attitude, I think, is what we perceive ourselves or others to be, mm -hmm. and what we expect from them. Yeah, and, and that's, that's it. It's what we expect of people, and it's how we expect them to return or reciprocate certain things. Um, and, in fact, as we're recording this, this is going to be a sermon for tomorrow. I'm just going to let everybody know. Um, you can catch us on Facebook, Greater Second Baptist Church, uh, Marion, Indiana. But we're going to be talking about having an attitude of gratitude. And so one thing that as I was preparing, I noticed that an attitude is uh, cyclical. It goes around and around and around. Mm -hmm. uh, and sometimes people with attitudes are not always sure why they have the attitude they have. Um, you know, sometimes people feel that they can just do things just to be doing them. Mm -hmm. And like you said before, you know, when you're looking at generational things that are taking place, well, my dad did it, his dad did it, their dad did it, so forth and so on. And so when you ask, well, why do you do it? Well, I don't know. We've just been doing it, yeah. you know, and we find that in the church as well. You know, why do you worship this way or why do you do this and why do you do that? Well, that's what we've always done. You know, I, I remember um, um, my father always used to say, you know, sometimes people just have you know, piss poor attitudes and things, you know, that's what he would mm -hmm. say. That's not a very Christian thing to say, but that's, that's what they would say. And, and I, and I used to always wonder, what does he mean? They have this kind of attitude. Um, so, but then I started realizing that, you know, sometimes you just find people that are not happy about anything. Yeah, they have the poor outlook, you know, whether it's because they've gone through some circumstances or somebody else that they love is going through circumstances mm -hmm. and they're angry with what's taking place instead of trying to do something about it. Mm -hmm. You know, um, one of the uh, scripture that, that, that comes to mind comes out of Luke uh, the sixth chapter and it's talking about the, the leper, um, the 10 lepers. And the thing is that, you know, they were trying to get Jesus' attention um, as they um, saw him passing by. And one thing that they, they kept doing, they kept crying out to him uh, for help. 
And, you know, sometimes a person with an attitude is crying out for, for attention or help. Mm -hmm. and, and sometimes that attention isn't always a positive attention. Exactly. Exactly. You know, um, I, I look at people that go on Facebook and they always complain about mm -hmm. this and that is happening in their lives. And they, they want the audience that they're trying to connect with to feel sorry for them. Yeah. And when they don't feel sorry for them, then they get that, that attitude that you talked about earlier. And it's like, well, why aren't you on my side and feel this way? You know, because this was done to me or things like that. And so, um, you know, and isn't it strange that people will go on a social media and and show their attitude, but then when they get around people, they won't say anything? You well, know? we've discovered over the years that social media is that double-edged sword, mm -hmm. you know, where it could be a great tool or an evil weapon. And how many people have we seen in all the generations, you know, from little kids up to the oldest like us and older, mm -hmm. um, use that ability to say whatever they want on social media because they're not face-to-face. -face. They don't have to deal with, you know, back in the day, we used to have conversations. I remember us sitting in yeah. Taylor University around our table, mm -hmm. and we would talk, and we would see the reaction immediately. Mm -hmm. and, and, and so we had to deal with that. Yes. where now social media has removed that ability for us so that we can say and do whatever we want, not have the immediate uh, response to it, and then uh, let them stew in it. And if they say, well, hey, you know, I'm, I'm sorry, it's sad and everything else, and it's like, no, 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 you don't get off that easy. Well, and, and that's the thing. They can hide behind their attitude um, on social media because, A, they don't have to take any responsibility or accountability. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, when you look at um, how people uh, are, are showing their attitudes in various venues, I mean, we can look in our government and we can see the attitudes there. We can look uh, uh, at work and see the people with attitudes there. We can go into a grocery store. You know, the one thing I really hate is to go into a fast food restaurant, order some food, give them my money. And then the person behind the counter got a bad attitude. Mm -hmm. I want my money back. I want out of there. You keep what you got. Because a bad attitude doesn't help me make me want to uh, patronize you, okay? Right. And that's the same thing could be uh, uh, said at the church. People with bad attitudes. You know, the first time I, I, I started pastoring at Greater Second Baptist Church, I had a meeting with the, the usher president. I said, you make sure everybody that, that is on the door has a smiling face. If they're having a bad day, tell them stay home. Mm -hmm. Okay? Because we don't want to show a bad attitude coming in here. So, you know, we want people to have an attitude of gratitude. You know, I know we got a world right now where things are just topsy-turvy. Nobody's agreeing on anything. Everybody's at each other's throat. But there is a reason to be happy. Yes, and we as pastors need to project that in our messages as well. Because how many times, you know, do we do the doom and gloom and, yes. and not show the attitude of gratitude that you're talking about, mm -hmm. where we can say, thank you, Jesus, for showing this to us, or thank you, God, that you pointed this out to me so that I don't go over the abyss and things like that. I got this great T-shirt my, my daughter-in-law gave me, God bless her soul, and, and, and the T-shirt simply says, anything you say can wind up in a sermon. Amen. <laughs> okay, I love that shirt. Anything UK can can wind up in a sermon, and, and often does, and it will. Yeah, I, I hey, I will, I will make a joke or tell a joke about anything and anybody, because sermons shouldn't be so sad, so doom mm -hmm. and gloom. So we gotta we gotta uh, show the right attitude. So even I, as, go I, I'm going to give you a personal experience. When I first became a pastor 22 years ago, and I had my first church. I went in there and, you know, I want to be, you know, the type of person that God wants me to be, you know, talk about sin and talk mm -hmm. about how we shouldn't do this and do that. And after about the third or fourth week, one of my parishioners came up to me and said, hey, John, Pastor John, I know that you're speaking the word of God and I know that you're on point and everything, but week after week after week of, you know, 
sin this and sin that and sin this, you know, we're feeling beat up. Yeah. And, you know, when are we going to have the happily ever after? Mm -hmm. You know, and it got me to thinking and it, it made me change the way that I viewed my messages. Mm -hmm. Because even though we could be scripturally perfect on it, mm -hmm. you know, and the Holy Spirit has given us to it, there's a measure of grace yeah. that needs to be added to it. And then to be able to have the attitude of saying, well, I'm so thankful that God is willing to forgive me of this. You know, I remember um, Professor Bieberstein, he was our professor at Taylor University. And um, we were in class one day and he said to us, don't become great pastors to become terrible husbands. Amen. Okay. And so, you know, I used to uh, I always think, you know, m my wife must, you know, really, really, really love me, first of all, to let me do this. Okay. Because any man in his right mind wouldn't choose being a pastor as a vocation. But at the same time, I'm appreciative of her for walking this road alongside of me, just like Marsha does with you. Amen. You know, yep. uh, you know, these ladies have been at our side. So, you know, I'm, I have an attitude of appreciation for her. And so when we look at what is uh, what we're doing, I like what Zig Ziglar uh, used to say. He says, failure is not a detour. It's not a dead end street. If God wanted us to be unhappy and not show a, a proper attitude, he would have just left us where we were. Yeah. <laughs> so... Yeah. So, so with that, you know, we're talking about this attitude, you know, even as Christians, we still have to show the right attitude. Mm -hmm. The leper in chapter 17 of Luke, I said six early, but it's chapter 17, uh, that one of the 10 lepers after Jesus had, had healed them and he told them to go show themselves to the priest. One of the lepers stopped, mm -hmm. and before they got to the priest, he turned around and went back to Jesus and fell down on his knees, and, 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 he, and he started praising and thanking God and, and telling Jesus, thank you for what, what you did. He was thankful, and, and he had an attitude of gratitude because he could have still been that leper which was outcast, which was not allowed in the community, but he wanted to go back and tell that person that had done something for him, I appreciate what you did. Mm -hmm. and, and, and how many times in the church, or even in our own lives, even as pastors, um, do we come across this thing where we say, you know, we're always talking about God is love, and God does mm -hmm. this, and he wants the best for us, and so, you know, how many times do we really sit back and say to ourselves, God doesn't have to do this yeah. for us. Yeah. God chooses to do this. God did not have to send his son mm -hmm. for our sins, but he did yeah. because he loves us. And that in itself should have the greatest gratitude of all because without Jesus, then our sins are not forgiven. Our sins are not covered by the blood. And you know, as we look at our lives and, and we pray to God and God heals us in different ways, whether it be physically or financially or emotionally or whatever, and we sit there and say, well, that's what God's supposed to do. <laughs> well, but there's the fallacy of, of, of having an attitude of gratitude. You know, God didn't have to do any of the things that he's done for us, but because he loved us, he did it. You know, that's just like having a wife. Your wife ain't your maid. Your wife ain't your servant. She ain't, she ain't your uh, uh, cleanup person. She ain't your babysitter. She is your wife. And sometimes, you know, when people come in, they say they want to do marriage counseling with me. The first thing I tell them, hey, you might want to think about that because by the time this counseling is over, you may not might want to marry whoever you're thinking about marrying. Because you're going to find out that, hey, we need healthy boundaries. We need healthy standards. And then we're going to have to learn how to appreciate and love and, 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 and do all these things on a continuous basis. And then 20 years down the line, you can say, you know what, I'm glad I married you. Mm -hmm. But we did it the right way. So when we're talking about having an attitude of gratitude, I think it's very important for the person to realize and understand what they bring to the table. You know, when you talk about marriage, you know, um, 
I appreciate Marcia being my wife and putting up with me being a pastor because there's so many demands of the pastors and mm-hmm. everything. Um, the things I do for her is not out of obligation. Right. You know, I don't think of them as obligations. You know, sometimes they say, well, you know, you're only doing this because you're married to me. No, I'm doing this because I love you. Yeah. You know, I don't have to do this, but I choose to do this because you make me want to do this for you. And and why can't we have that same sort of attitude with God in, in our service to him? Why can't we say, yeah, I don't have to do this for you, God, but I want to so much because I love you so much. Look at what you've done for me, and I can never, ever repay. Just like that leper, I can never, ever repay you for what you've done. And, you know, that's where we need to be right now as we're talking about healing broken souls. We have to get people to realize, yeah, you may have gone through this and you may have gone through that. But there were people around you that helped carry you through, just like Christ carried you through the storm, that that, that helped you and they didn't have to help you. Mm-hmm. Okay, maybe they babysitted your kids or maybe they, they took give you a, gra- a, a ride to work or maybe they were just sitting there listening to you while you uh, uh, told your song of misery or whatever the case is. They didn't have to do those things, but they mm-hmm. did. And now that you've come through or that you come to a moment in time, you can go back and say, you know what, I thank you for listening. You mm-hmm. know, I thank you for being there with me when I needed you. I thank you for just just allowing me a few moments Look, look at the parents and the grandparents who have prayed for us and spent hours on their knees mm-hmm. for us. And, and it brings me to that story of when they were at Peter's mother's house mm-hmm. and they were having a meal. And the crowds were so big that there was these four guys who had this person who was lame. And they tore open the roof mm-hmm. of the house to get this person down into seeing Jesus where he was healed. Mm -hmm. And I'm sitting there thinking, did he ever go back and thank his buddies for loving him so much that they would tear down somebody else's roof? First of all, I want I want uh, uh, to be paid for that torn up roof. That's what I want first, and that's the attitude <laughs> of gratitude. So, but but I mean, no, I know what you, you're saying. You, you yeah. stop and yeah. think: Have we gone back to our parents and our grandparents and and the people in the church who have prayed for us mm-hmm. all these years when we were in our waywardness? And, and gone back and say, because of your prayers, God protected me for this moment. You know, before my mother died, I, I made sure every time I saw her, when I knew the end was near, I, I said, you know what? I thank you, thank you, thank you for everything you did for me because you didn't have to do it, didn't have to do it. You didn't have to do it. And so what we're saying to everyone out there today is let's have an attitude of gratitude. Let's not think that the reason people do things for us and with us and and because of us is because they have to. They don't have to. Jesus did what he did for the leper because he loved him and he wanted them to, he wanted him to acknowledge that because even Jesus said, hey, wasn't there 10 of you? Mm -hmm. And only one came back to say thank you. Yeah. You know, and that was a saving effect that that happened with that 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 leper that day. And you know, me and you have been friends for many many years. We both say, you know, you didn't have to do that. You didn't have to do that. We and but we still love each other because of the friendship that we've had these years. You know, you've gotten out of your home and driven five hundred miles to help me move when I couldn't get nobody. That was a piece of cake, man. That was a piece of cake, all that junk. <laughs> so, but you did that. You did that for me, and I've told you for years and years and years, I appreciate what you did. You'll be my friend to the end, and I thank God for you. You know, And I thank God for you. I mean, I always tell people that Benny, Benny is my best, it's the best friends next to my wife and my God. Mm-hmm. And, you know, he's the only one that gets to call me Johnny. Mm-hmm. That's that special term that you have but i am so grat grateful for all the love and support that you've given me in my ministry and as a friend and you know you you never held back whenever i needed to have a slap off the side of the head yeah likewise so what we're saying to everybody today uh and do it in the way that christ would have you do it do it with the conviction of genuineness do it with the understanding that what christ did and what others do for you 
did not have to be done and that even though it may have been big or it may have been small, thank those that have helped you in your times of greatness, sadness, and joys. Well, you know, whenever we focus on the gratitude, that's where we find the real joy. Amen. We're not we're not looking at the storms around us. We're looking at the thankfulness that God has brought us through it. All right. And since we have attitude of gratitude, we're going to sign off. Uh, n- next time, we're going to have some visitors with us. Please continue to uh, hear us on, on our podcast and look for us on YouTube uh, because we'll be there. We'll Amen. be there always encouraging the people of God, telling them to heal broken souls. God bless you. God bless. Look around, we need hope. Dark world, we need hope. Broke world, we need hope. We out, need hope, need hope, need hope. Look around, we need hope. Broke world, we need hope. We out, need hope. But tell them it's so for the broken. 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 It Tell them it's so for the broken. Yeah. It's so for the broken. Yeah. It's so for yeah. the broken. Yeah. It's so for yeah. the broken. Boy, look around and need hope. No question about it. Can't get around the whole world around us. Need hope. No escaping battle.